everyone. This is Karen from Herterutin, and um, I'm just checking the audio real fast to see um, Amanda, who is on the panel with me today from Brecky Tours and Travel. Um, are you able to uh, to hear everything okay at this point? I can hear you just fine, Karen. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start, even though we have... Um, just a few people that are missing, but hopefully they uh, will be able to join in. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for participating in this uh, quick webinar. I won't keep you too long. It's just a uh, um, overview um, and a, a quick lesson on um, a little bit of history on her to Rutin. So uh, thank you for attending. And Amanda is uh, with Brecky, who will be uh, here at the end uh, for the Q&A uh, session as well. Um, but Amanda, please do feel free to, to chime in anytime. Thanks, Karen. And I uh, just want to say thanks, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. Um, I know we've had a few people that wanted to probably listen in on the recording later. And so um, hopefully they will join us uh, or get to experience this a little bit later. But for those of you that are live, then we welcome your questions at the end. And Karen, I'm going to let you take it away with this cute little penguin. <laughs> yes, definitely. So our tagline, like a lot of the other cruise lines, is connect with your inner explorer. And that is uh, definitely true across the board on every single destination that we take your guests to. Um, so we say, yes, connect with your inner explorer, but now it's time to connect with our, and I mean our as in uh, Herterutin as well as um, the guest on board. So um, today's focus will definitely be on Antarctica, um, talking a little bit about the two ships that um, will be down starting in October um, exploring the uh, Antarctica region. So at first we've got the MS Fram, which uh, was built in 2007, holds just over 200 passengers. And then uh, announcing of the MS Midnight Soul. We are, um, she has um, since 2003 been cruising the coast of Norway. And starting this October, we will be bringing her down to Antarctica and um, giving a, uh, an opportunity for uh, a lot more visitors uh, to uh, experience uh, her tour uh, through um, the destination with Antarctica. I put the pictures uh, picture in here for the fourth generation captains because I think that's very relevant uh, to bring up. Um, the captains on board, as I say, are fourth generation captains, and this is across our fleet. Um, the captains here um, actually train the other ship captains on how to maneuver the waters, and this speaks to uh, all the destinations that you will see the major ships in. Um, with Hertegruten and our heritage, we've been around since 1893, so we definitely uh, are very familiar with exploration um, and um, experienced professionals. Um, it's uh, the, the heritage and exploration, and including all the fjords that we get into, is in our DNA. So. Um, back in 1893, so we're almost 125 years old. So I'm just going to show a quick video here, um, a little bit about, um, so if your speakers uh, should be on, this is quite cute.
blue pants here for me. There we go. So um, I, I showed that video um, to give you an idea of what it would be like on um, the experience with Hurdy-Gurdon, bringing you directly onto the continent and um, being able to walk the land. And the, the tenting that you saw there, um, being able to sleep in a tent on the continent, um, nobody else can offer. It's about uh, $530 a night to experience that. But um, some uh, find it very adventurous and uh, very different. So if you're interested in that, that is something that we are offering on the ms Fram right now. It is not available for the Midnight Soul when we bring her down to Antarctica come this October. Um, but uh, definitely ask uh, one of your uh, uh, travel agents with Brecky and they'd be able to get you this information. So um, a little bit about why Hertigruten. Like I said, we are um, um, a, a company that, uh, and a, a, I don't even want to say it's a cruise, it's a voyage, it's a destination that we completely immerse you into. This would include um, the wildlife, um, being able to come up close um, to the, the penguins. Um, there are 17 different uh, species of penguins that are recognized throughout the world. Um, but our purpose uh, when we bring down the Midnight Soul is to put these uh, 10 other species right in the path of the Midnight Soul. So you would have a full experience of being up close uh, and personal. Um, they're uh, not a fearful uh, species as they would. Um, uh, you see the gentleman here that is uh, taking pictures in the, the right corner here um, where they're just walking up to him because they're just very curious creatures. Um, and that's what we want uh, you all to experience. Including the icebergs, which is part of the landings, um, the, uh, the sea uh, experience. Uh, uh, when we bring the Midnight Soul and having two ships, we want to still provide the experience, the overall experience of Antarctica. So we will be doing um, sea uh, excursions and land excursions at the same time. Um, the, uh, the ships will be, since we can't land more than 100 people at a time on the continent, we are splitting um, the passengers up. So in the morning, there will be a landing um, on the continent as well as um, the sea excursions. And then in the afternoon, those that did the sea excursions then would then um, be able to, to do the, uh, the landings um, on land on the continent. So they just switch. So those in the morning would be doing um, the same thing, but in the afternoon. So a little bit with the wildlife here, with the whales. Um, the uh, polar circle boat that you see here, which I'll have better pictures, um, are able to take you up close and personal to um, the sea life with uh, the various types of, of, um, of uh, wildlife, um, as you see. So including bird life, um, they um, are abound as well. These are the gent twos. And then the seals, the elephant seals with the um, leopard seals and elephant seals. Uh, being on shore, the expedition team, um, and I'll talk about that too as well, but um, before the passengers go aboard or go um, on to their landings, they um, uh, survey the land first, um, the continent, before uh, the passengers do get off, um, just so we can see where the wildlife is, we can take you directly there.
there we go. So cute little video. Um, uh, I, I love that one in particular, and I can definitely send that to uh, to you, Amanda, for uh, to send that out to um, the participants today, um, along with the other videos as well, if, if uh, so desired. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the, the uh, categories of ships that are um, in Antarctica. There are three classifications. This is a category three um, vessel that um, if you are um, a, a passenger vessel that carries more than 501 uh, passengers to the continent um, through the IATO, which is the International Association of Antarctica Travel Organization, um, they hold uh, very high expectations of our uh, ships and vessels that come through uh, and visit the continent. So anybody that is over that carries passengers over 501 uh, are not allowed to do landings. So the um, experience that you would receive on a Category 3 um, is a uh, cruise by, in a sense, uh, uh, whereby you'd be at the bow of their ship, unable to uh, participate um, with actually getting off the ship. This is a Category 1, a 100 passenger uh, vessel, um, just as a comparison so you can see the size. And then, of course, the Category 2, which is us, the MS Fram, uh, just carries 250, uh, between 200 and 250 passengers um, in the polar waters and to Antarctica, of course. And then um, the Category 2, Midnight Soul. Uh, right now, Midnight Soul is uh, carrying just under 1,000 passengers, but when we bring her uh, to Antarctica, we will drop that uh, passenger count to 500, which will then um, give us that Category 2 expedition uh, ship um, that will be able to do the landings um, as we promised. So the deck viewing areas, as you um, will see as you uh, determine uh, the ships that you want to go on, and hopefully it will be heard of and that um, the landing vessels and uh, whatnot that we use, as well as others, um, are all up on deck. Unlike with Hurtigruten, our uh, upper deck levels are um, made for uh, viewing sites, as well as, um, you'll see the lady here in the red, she is part of the expedition team. Um, the captain is also out and about for questions as we go through uh, the waters of Antarctica. A little bit about the inner uh, observation, interior observation area, sorry. Um, we, as these two ships, um, have designed these vessels so you are um, not um, missing any of the um, the sites that are outside. So while you're dining, you're still being able to capture the experience of, of what is outside and the beauty of uh, the destination, whether it's uh, Antarctica um, or Iceland, Greenland, Spitsburg, and polar waters. We still want you to be able to experience, um, as you would expect being outside when the ship is moving, albeit at a slow speed, it, it can be a little chilly. So we want you to be inside um, uh, when you need to be um, and still be able to enjoy um, the outside. The chefs on board are um, all Scandinavian, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the cuisines. I know that is a very important factor. Um, since uh, you would expect the Scandinavians, uh, the food is um, uh, the cuisine on board. You're, you're going to find a lot of, uh, of the local uh, cheeses and uh, the breads and whatnot that are made on board, um, but as well as the um, the fish. Um, a lot of um, seafood is is served, um, but if you don't want to, you know fish every night, we can definitely um, accommodate other um, items um, at your request. So and dietary as well, gluten free. Um, all we would need to do is. Um, uh, once you come into the dining room, is to let the uh, the waiter know. And a little bit with the dessert, everything fresh, freshly made on board. A little bit with the uh, staterooms. This is their standard um, uh, outside. The beds, uh, the bedding, as you would see here, is an L-shaped and/or they are side by side. 
Um, the beds do not pull together unless you are in a, um, a suite. And this is a, a picture of one of the suites in those suites with uh, very wonderful amenities and the European bedding as well as the, the standard outside um, cabins as well. So great accommodations. A little bit about the itineraries here. Um, I'm going to talk about Antarctica with the, the destination itself and then go into some of the other itineraries that Herta Bruton uh, covers. So this one here, we are uh, introducing the Midnight. So like I said, starting in October, this is going to be doing the Chilean Fjords. So you will be flying into Santiago, which um, then you would have an evening I'm just going to advance here uh, to Santiago so you can see you'd have an evening in the city and or do an organized shore excursion. And then the next morning you would get up and take a charter flight, which is included in your price, to Punta Arenas. And I'm just going to back up here a little bit so you can see the, um, the map. Uh, so once you leave um, Santiago and fly down on that charter flight to Punta Arenas, you will then be um, uh, traveling to an inn to Tucker Island, Port, uh, Porto Williams, and uh, down to Cape Horn. Um, a little bit about um, the Chilean fjords. Um, because we, um, along the coast of Norway as well, lots and lots of fjords. So um, it's definitely uh, a no-brainer for us to be coming through with the Chilean fjords since we, uh, our ships are made for the fjords as well. Beautiful destination, taking you right up the, uh, the middle of the fjords. And then down to Cape Horn, and um, Cape Horn uh, was greatly reduced by the opening of the Panama Canal in 1914, but prior to that, um, some larger vessels had to maneuver around um, Cape Horn, uh, which sometimes took days, um, depending on the waters, um, to get to their destination. Cape Horn marks the northern boundary of the Drake Passage and marks where the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans collide. Um, this is an anchor uh, destination where the ship would anchor and you would take one of the polar circle boats. Uh, just on the other side of the island here is um, uh, steps up to the lighthouse. And the flag here represents that uh, northernmost point uh, on Cape Horn before we start to come into uh, Drake Passage. Uh, once the, the landing's here, of course, weather permitting, we have two opportunities on the outbound to stop at Cape Horn. If it's not weather permitting, then we attempt another stop on the return back from Antarctica. Uh, once you do um, step onto Cape Horn, um, you will have some time here and then um, also receive a, certificate, uh, a certification of um, being able to land um, here on Cape Horn. So a little bit about Antarctica once we pass through Drake Passage. Um, we are. Um, we want you to feel nice and warm once you're out on deck. So these are complimentary expedition jackets that we will be giving you. Um, maybe uh, they are brand new. We just came out with a new design specifically made for uh, Hertha Gruden. So you will be receiving these on board. So no need to pack your um, larger jackets uh, once you get down into this uh, area on board. Uh, then it'll be nice and warm in these jackets here. So here is the uh, bigger uh, map uh, once you leave uh, Santiago coming down into the Chilean fjords, uh, Cape Horn right there on the tip coming through Drake Passage and um, down to Antarctica. So a little bit about the, the landing sites with Deception Island and then Brown Bluff. These are all um, areas that um, we spend a number of hours in. Um, Wilhelmina Bay and Cooler Island, which you saw in the quick video there with the penguins. This is um, a large area throughout the, uh, the harbor here uh, and the bay of the um, where I was mentioning that we put the uh, midnight stall right in the path of the penguins. This is um, where I was talking about. So Deception Island, the safest harbors in Antarctica and a perfect natural harbor mostly free from ice and wind, so you're secluded a little bit um, uh, to where it's not the rough waters and you're, you're uh, able to get off and, um, and explore um, the landings. 
With Brown Bluff, the volcano is named uh, Brown Bluff because of its steep slopes, which I'm sure you, you saw. Um, imported uh, bird areas, or imported, important bird areas by, uh, designated by BirdLife International. And it, it supports the breeding colony of about 20,000 pairs of uh, Adelaide, as well as uh, 550 pairs of the Gentoos, which is the previous picture that uh, you saw of the birds uh, at the beginning of this presentation. So uh, great areas in here for bird watchers, uh, well watchers, um, and of course the penguin colonies. I didn't expect uh, any of you all to be uh, in depth reading this, but I just wanted to give you a little idea of how organized um, the uh, destination is. This one, the adventure from Cape Horn to the penguins of Antarctica. Uh, just day one through four, exploring the Chilean fjords in Cape Horn, and then uh, day five at sea, coming through Drake Passage, and then coming into Antarctica. It's a 15-day destination. Um, I've put in a, a number of days here with variations on the, the trip itself, depending on how long um, you all can be gone. So this is, like I said, adventures from Cape Horn to the penguins of Antarctica. This one, the legendary Magellan and Chilean fjords and Antarctica, starting um, again with your charter flight from Santiago to Punta Arenas. And this time, uh, you're going to be going down to, uh, after Cape Horn, down through Drake Passage, exploring um, the uh, uh, Deception Island area where the penguin colonies are, and then you're going to come back out and up to Port Stanley, the Falkland Islands. Port Stanley is the capital of um, South Georgia Islands, which is uh, where... Um, uh, more colonies of uh, penguins are located, uh, the Falkland Islands, and then, uh, yep, so down to Punta Arenas. So uh, day 18, so this one's 18 days versus 15 days. And discover Patagonia and Antarctica. Again, starting in um, Punta Arenas. This is uh, on the midnight solo coming through uh, the fjords there down to Cape Horn and then coming back. Uh, this one is a 16 day. So um, check with Brecking. I'll be able to tell you um, uh, Brown Bluff is not part of that itinerary and that's why it went from 18 days to 16 days. Um, but I'm sure that um, if you have any questions on this that uh, Brecky would be able to, uh, one of the travel agents there would be able to get you exactly what you're looking for. Adventures to the Chilean Fjords in Antarctica. This is a, another 15-day, um, but it does not include uh, the Falkland Islands. Um, but still, uh, the Patagonian Chilean Fjords with Cape Horn in there um, as well. So water level access on our ships. Um, we are the only ones to do this, to, where you can see, and it, it speaks to having more room on the upper decks to be able to, to walk around where our landing gear is kept inside, um, as opposed to some of the other ships um, store their landing gear up on the upper decks there, which limit the, um, the areas for which you can walk around. The uh, landing of the polar circle boats, um, you would take a uh, quick little elevator ride down to sea level, board the um, polar circle boats. Um, so you would walk right off the ship, right onto the polar circle boats. You're not having to climb stairs, um, which I think uh, is very important. There's uh, uh, stable uh, stabilizers on these ships as well, so the ships are not rocking back and forth. Very easy to get on and off these uh, polar circle boats for the landings. This is a little bit about the landing craft. Um, on board the Midnight Soul holds 15 guests, and this would also then um, include your driver and the expedition team leader. These are purchased new for the Midnight Soul, and it has a lot to do with the, um, the fuel on board, um, going um, to uh, diesel fuel, which is cleaner for the environment. Um, so we have just purchased uh, some new uh, Zodiac boats, as well as for the MS Fram, we purchased two um, new polar circle boats um, as well. Expedition team leaders we will have on both ships. Um, the uh, expedition team leaders are uh, very experienced, and this one uh, with Karen here standing, she was a, uh, an attorney, uh, trained attorney, with uh, had been doing that for years, went on our first expedition 
um, experienced herself and fell in love with it and got her PhD in uh, multiple um, uh, areas. Um, so now she leads a team of 12 expedition um, guides um, that are fluent in um, various languages. Um, this is the crew a little bit. Uh, so you've got uh, 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 Scandinavians on board. You've got uh, Polish, Spanish. Uh, the gentleman on the far right is uh, Bob, um, has been with us for years uh, from the U.S. Everybody speaks various languages, but they do all speak English, so there's no language barriers uh, when it comes to speaking uh, to the, um, the different expedition team guides. The Young Explorers Club, uh, this is new to Herturuten. Uh, we just started this, uh, we'll start it uh, on the Midnight Soul uh, for uh, this October. And it's designed for uh, young travelers from the age of 7 to 13 years of age. And they're taught about the destination and how fragile the earth really is and, and the appreciation of where they're at and what they're seeing and experiencing, um, being able to be uh, completely dedicated uh, side by side with one of our uh, staff members that um, are able to um, explain in um, through the child's eyes versus how you would explain it with an adult with a different, very uh, different understanding of uh, the destination. So um, once they have completed this Explorers Club, they are given a certification and a booklet stamped by the captain, signed by the captain, so they're able to take it back and share uh, with their friends at school. Um, but uh, with the uh, Exploration Club, we wanted to add this in because we found that um, we are having a lot of grandparents that want to take their grandkids um, along so they would be able to experience this. So we beefed it up a little bit um, so that not only are they um, being able to um, experience the continent, but they get to learn about it um, and, and uh, uh, take some kind of, uh, uh, make some kind of impact uh, with them as young kids being, seeing the, the continent um, through the eyes of children. We also have photography workshops on board, so um, uh, the, uh, the shop uh, uh, workshop um, team on board are qualified photographers, experienced photographers, as you would expect um, here, and even in this picture where you're seeing multiple colors. Um, we want you to be able to capture all this, and uh, once you do the landings, come back and be able to um, uh, know uh, you, you may be familiar with your cameras, but the cameras that we have on board um, that you would be able to learn about and, and use, um, uh, we want you to be able to capture and feel comfortable using them. So we have uh, multiple uh, photo optic test centers uh, to be able to have one-on-one -on -one, uh, experiences uh, with our photo center um, experienced um, leaders. This is a little bit about the workshops, uh, basic image editing. Um, we've limited it to 10 um, because that's the number of cameras that we carry, plus we want that more one-on-one -on -one experience. Um, so taught by uh, two professional photographers, um, I'm just going over what is included in the program, uh, the photo school introduction booklet with the appendix for notes um, that you could take with you, designated workstations throughout the, the voyage. Um, and priority access to the photo optics test center uh, and equipment, uh, along with the uh, cleaning kits that come with these uh, Zeiss lens cameras. So a little bit about that, um, three different um, uh, uh, technical um, experiences that you can uh, opt in for. We also have a science program, also new for all ages, uh, science lectures, more hands-on, and it's complimentary. The microscopes, again, we have 10 uh, of them. One is uh, uh, one of the 10 biological, um, uh, like a, a DM500 designed for applications in teaching, as well as uh, the same goes to uh, the geological, um, but the, of course, the geological made for um, the examination of the stones and insects and anything that you would uh, find in the destinations, being able to bring back on board and um, <clears throat> excuse me, examining them in a little bit uh, further detail with an experienced uh, uh, technician. 
kayaking certification. Uh, we do have uh, professional kayakers on uh, the, on board the uh, the ship, so you're able to um, take your own uh, kayak uh, that we have on board out uh, and uh, receive your kayaking certification, so you can come home and. Um, feel comfortable in the seas and the waters that you uh, are surrounded by. Typical day on the landings, I put this here so you can see that the ship um, uh, stays out uh, and we, after we board the Polar Circle boats, being able to come on board um, the, uh, right onto the landings, the bow of the uh, Polar Circle boats, um, which carry about 10 to 12 passengers, you can walk right off uh, from the Polo Circle boat right onto the continent. Easy uh, step on and off, but um, always with assistance with the expedition team. And the ice cruising. So like I said, uh, during the morning and afternoon, we have two different types of landings, of course, on the continent. And this is a little bit about the, uh, the sea uh, exploration to where we'll, uh, we give you all the um, the, the floating gear to keep you warm as well. Um, you're with an, uh, an expedition leader and uh, you're out having fun and exploring the, the uh, ice sculptures. And, um, once you come back on board, um, we have interactive sessions that you can discuss with the um, exploration team, the expedition team leaders of uh, what you experienced that day. Um, so if you opt to you know, talk amongst uh, fellow passengers up on deck, we also have the interactive sessions. Um, the, um, most of the sessions are held um, as we are transiting, leaving Cape Horn down to Antarctica. That's uh, when these sessions definitely take place um, to tell you a little bit about uh, uh, what you're going to experience. Uh, and then on the return, um, what you have experienced um, and being able to um, have your questions qualified and answered in more detail. And then having time in the panorama lounge area just to reflect and take in the beauty of the continent. Um, being able to see the, uh, the windows here, floor to ceiling where there's no obstructions and sit up and have your favorite cocktail or coffee and, and um, this lady here just being able to see the, um, the photos that she took via her iPad. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about the value too. Um, people think that the destination dictates a, a higher price value, which is not the case. So if you were in Alaska, um, this I believe is Ketchikan. If you were in an inside cabin to a mini suite, this is the price that you would be paying. Um, on a much larger vessel versus on um, Hurtigruten for Antarctica. This is our price point for a standard outside cabin, $429 per person per day. Plus, given the destination and um, all the activities that we have, um, this um, is uh, definitely a great comparison and price point to be able to um, uh, have it uh, be affordable. Uh, to be able to even think about going to Antarctica at that price point. Um, people think it's a, a destination that is uh, too expensive when um, in reality it's really not. Right now we have a single supplement waiver on Midnight Soul, so if you book by June 30th, 2016, we are waiving the uh, single supplement. Um, we, uh, the Midnight Soul is a um, single um, traveler um, opportunity uh, much more uh, room as well on the ship. Like I said, uh, she normally carries just under a thousand passengers, but coming into Antarctica, we are dropping her to 500 so we can do those landings, which gives you a lot more um, personal experience on board the ship. So this is their experience. If you were on one of the larger Category 3 vessels um, or the Hertogruten way, which would you prefer? Being able to um, do the landings from the, the Polar Circle boats right onto the continent, um, right where the wildlife is, a big difference. So a little bit about uh, the other destinations. I'm going to show you, this is Pittsburgh and Greenland and Antarctica. So the, um, this would uh, focus on the MS Fram. Um, she has been uh, with us since 2007, made for polar waters, and uh, this is a little bit about Spitsbergen, and Greenland, and Antarctica.
So beautiful destinations, uh, not uh, just Antarctica, but uh, Spitsbergen and uh, Greenland, beautiful. And I'll talk a little bit about that destination in a minute, but I want to talk about Norway. Uh, the coast of Norway, which is uh, just under 1,500 miles long, it's a beautiful, beautiful destination. Um, we uh, have 12 ships uh, starting um, this, uh, in a couple weeks we'll have 13 ships. We're introducing the MS Spitsbergen to the coast of Norway which will give us 13 ships that cruise the coast here 365 days a year, seven days a week. And this would be flying into Oslo um, and uh, making your way over to Bergen. There's, uh, you can either take a, uh, a flight from Oslo over to Bergen or a uh, beautiful train ride. It's about an eight-hour train ride to Bergen. Start your voyage in Bergen, uh, going northbound up to Kirkenes, stopping at uh, um, after you leave with uh, the Bergen um, the, uh, town of Bergen uh, to Song Fjord, which is the longest, deepest fjord, into uh, even Geringer Fjord, making our way up into Trondheim, uh, Trondheim with a uh, beautiful Trondheim, uh, Nidaros Cathedral, lots of churches, um, stopping uh, even in Bodo after we cross the Arctic Circle, which we have a, a wonderful ceremony. On. <laughs> we bring King Neptune on and uh, take a, uh, uh, it's called the Arctic Baptism, uh, and take a ladle of uh, uh, ice water and uh, pour it down your back and then give you a nice uh, little uh, baby shot of uh, aqua beet, uh, which is uh, one of the local um, um, tastes of, uh, what do I want to say, it's a, it tastes like uh, warmed apple juice, um, but it's a, it's a nice treat after you've had ice water poured down your back. <laughs> Um, and then as we cross over the Arctic Circle, you'll find that the towns and villages get smaller and smaller. Um, coming up to Honigsvog up at the top here, which uh, is also where the North Cape is. Uh, I've got some... Uh, uh, North Cape is where the uh, northernmost point of Europe is. Um, and then as we come around to uh, Kirkenes, Kirkenes is seven miles from the Russian border. So you can start your trip in uh, Bergen uh, going northbound. That is uh, seven days, six nights. Or you can opt to fly from Oslo to Kirkenes and take the uh, trip southbound from Kirkenes to Bergen. Or you can do it round trip. It's 12 days if you were to start in Bergen and or Kirkenes. All these red dots that you see, these are the various ports of call that we stop in, whether you are on a six-day, seven-day, 
11 day, 12 day. These are 34 ports of call. The uh, ports which are um, normal uh, on the bigger ships, uh, you're stopping at six or seven, uh, but because we are a form of transportation for the local Norwegians, we uh, are dedicated service um, and stopping at these ports at various times. Uh, sometimes we're only stopping uh, for 15-20 uh, minutes, sometimes we're there for six hours. Um, it just depends, even down to the short excursions. So when you pull in, um, you see that we're only there for 30 minutes, and how can I do a short excursion that lasts two hours? Well, you're going to be off doing your short excursions, and uh, because the ships are on a, a schedule, the ship is going to continue up the coast or down the coast, whichever direction you're heading, and you're off doing your short excursions. But when you're done, you're taken right back to that ship, but it's going to be docked in a different port of call which gives complete immersion into the destination, uh, which is what Hertha Gruten's purpose is, is to completely um, immerse you into the activities and the beauty of the destinations that you're visiting. So hunting the lights along the coast of Norway, um, it's called hunting the lights. Uh, um, years back, uh, one of the cap uh, captains on board couldn't understand why all the um, passengers were running out uh, side to, uh, from their cabins um, and, and looking above, and he, it dawned on him that um, it was uh, the Aurora Borealis, um, so he nicknamed it Hunting the Light, um, which is after you cross over the Arctic Circle, uh, leaving Bergen, the towns and villages are smaller, um, so um, they're not as lit up, which makes the Northern Lights uh, much more brilliant. Uh, Northern Lights uh, time period is from November to about the middle of March. Um, so this is a little bit about um, what you would experience on board Kritter. So introducing um, Canada, Greenland, and Iceland, these are our new destinations. Um, we uh, will be uh, 
starting this with the uh, MS Fram as well as the new ship MS Spitsbergen. So um, I won't go into great detail, um, but I just wanted to show you a little bit about uh, these destinations and how you can combine uh, Iceland with Greenland and then um, coming down to St. John's uh, on the east uh, French side of Canada, as well as Norway, Spitsbergen, and Germany. So um, if uh, you were, let's just, for example, say you wanted to do the coast of Norway, you could fly um, from uh, Tromso up there, uh, right above the Arctic Circle, over uh, to Lagerbjerg. Um, Spitsbergen is one of the islands. It's a um, part of the archipelago of Svalbard, which is part of Norway, uh, flying into Lagerbjerg. Uh, population here is uh, 2,000 and uh, just recently reported for Spitsbergen, the polar bear uh, population just went from 4,300 to 5,000. So chances are uh, pretty good for you to see uh, polar bears in this region. Also Spitsbergen is um, 800 miles from the North Pole. Uh, South America, Morocco to Casablanca. So we, um, this will be on the MS Spitsbergen, departing from Montevideo, going up to Manaus, so you can then experience the uh, Amazon rainforest, and then uh, departing from uh, Manaus, going up to Casablanca is a new destination. And an overview for her different destinations for 2016, 17, and 18. Uh, very excited to add on South America on the Midnight Soul as well as Canada. So an overview, coast of Norway, Spitsbergen, Greenland, Canada. The, the list goes on. We're very excited um, to add on these new destinations. Um, and it goes without saying that uh, Brecky Travel and Tours is uh, experts when it comes to these destinations. Um, the um, Scandinavian countries um, are just beautiful in how you combine uh, those areas with other destinations. Um, along with um, the ships that we currently have, it was uh, um, I take great pride in announcing to today that we have uh, four new ships joining our fleet in 2018 and 19. This is the uh, preliminary designs of them. They will hold just uh, approximately 600 passengers cruising uh, all the destinations that we talked about today. And for further contact information, Amanda, this is uh, her contact information with Reiki Tours and of course my contact information. Please feel free to uh, reach out to Amanda and her team of experts um, that can and will help you connect with your inner explorer. Um, I will leave this, uh, come back to this, but I just wanted to show you this real fast on uh, what you could uh, experience with uh, the end of your trip um, when it comes to Antarctica. So to Sintak, which means a thousand thanks to Brecky uh, Tours and Travel. I will um, bring this back here so you've got uh, Amanda's contact information. And we'll open it up to questions. Should you have any, um, feel free to um, reach out to Amanda or myself. And or if you have any questions right now, I'd be happy to uh, assist with that. Uh, otherwise, Amanda, thank you so much for um, having me uh, as your guest today. And uh, successful um, destination um, experiences. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Karen, and thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, if you do have any questions about Antarctica or other destinations that Hertzgruten uh, includes, um, such as Norway, Spitsbergen, Greenland, um, any of those, feel free to give us a call at that 800 number that you see on your screen. Um, otherwise, uh, if you have questions that you would like answered today, we can certainly do that. There is a spot um, over on the right hand side where you can enter questions and that comes through to Karen and I and we'll be glad to answer those for you. So otherwise, um, I I don't see any questions on my end, Karen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you see any. I do not. So we look forward to receiving those via email. Okay, all right. Well great. Thanks everybody for joining us and we hope to see you in Norway or Antarctica soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks.